Hi everyone, Melissa here from Be and Cozy Stitching. This week's video is going to be a how-to. We were asked a question by Dawn, how do you make your display boards? And so I've got a couple different display boards to show you. And then I'm gonna go through and show you how to make the display boards that I like. And they're actually gonna fill this wall back here which is why I have this great big blank white wall behind me. And that way in future videos, you'll be able to see the projects that we're working on and it'll just film a whole lot nicer and it'll look good. And so, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So thank you, John, for the question. Now, I have a couple different kinds, like I told you. The first display board that I have is actually a method done by Lori Holt. And I will leave a description down below in case you want to catch that video on how to make these. Now, couple things about these display boards. Number one, they're perfect for travel. I use these when I teach. I put my steps on the boards and then I layer them. I stack them up and they lay super, super nice and flat. They don't slide around. They hug really well. Um, if I'm really worried, I'll tie a piece of fabric around them until I get where I need to go, but they stack fantastic. And so I highly recommend them. They also look really, really pretty sitting next to your sewing machine with those unfinished projects when you lay out your project and you start another one and another one and another one and yeah. So it looks really nice sitting next to your sewing machine all stacked up because all you see are these really pretty little edges with the fabric. So by all means, this kind is fantastic. The only downfall that I personally have is I'm not very good with a hot glue gun. And so I end up with a lot of glue along the edges because you do glue your fabric down and I just think if I'm going to display it on the wall I want something to finish pretty and I personally can't get these to finish pretty. I'm either too heavy-handed with the glue or have the wrong glue or whatever so for traveling they're perfect. For stacking next to the sewing machine they're perfect but for hanging on my wall, I like to use a different type. And the type that I like to use are completely covered in flannel. And that way you can make the display board match the room that you're putting it into. You can change the backgrounds as they get, I don't know, icky, dusty, dirty, old. So you can constantly keep them updated, new and fresh. And as you can see, they go all the way. The flannel goes all the way around and wraps all the way around. And then when I put it on the wall, it looks more like a picture hanging than display boards. So that's the method I'm gonna show you today. It's my favorite method. Um, and what you're gonna need for supplies you're going to need two pieces of poster board. They are foam core board, and they can be purchased at your local hardware store, your local art store, Walmart, um, Joann's, craft stores, anywhere they sell foam core board. Even the dollar store, I believe, has the foam core board. Foam core board is a little thicker, a little easier to wrap stuff around. It gives you a little more body, a little more stiffness, and it holds up over time. The next thing you're gonna need is some batting that you can wrap your foam core board with. You're going to need some flannel or fabric if you choose. Now, if you don't want fabric to cover it, you just wanna use the batting like Lori Holt boards, that's perfectly fine. Either method, whatever works for you is fantastic. Uh, again, I like the fabric because I like to decorate and I like to change things out and put a little color into my world. That's totally up to you. You will need some school glue. You will need a couple foam brushes. You will need a pair of scissors and you will need some duct tape. Now I like to go and get the fancy colored duct tape that adds just a little bit of wow. The truth of the matter is you don't see it. So if you don't want to put a whole lot of money into it, 
go with the silver duct tape, go with whatever you have on hand. Again, you're not gonna see it. The duct tape goes on the back, it helps hold the fabric in place and it finishes off the back of the board. But again, it's the back of the board, it's on the wall, you're not gonna see it. If you choose not to have the fancy, don't worry about it, it's totally fine. Okay, so now, oh, and I forgot, you're gonna need a little plate or a little dish or a plastic lid from a, I don't know, a plastic container that you're gonna recycle, throw out, something that you can put the glue in, add a little bit of water, mix it up, and use it as a palette so you can do your coverage. So I'm gonna go grab my lid, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how to make a display board. Be right back. Okay, so here we go. Now, what I've done is I've roughly cut out my batting pieces. I used two. I like a double thickness. And the reason I like a double thickness is because sometimes I like to put pins in because I have a little heavier item or a block or a table runner or whatever and I don't want it I don't want it to fall. So I will go ahead and put some corsage pins in it and that way I can have really pretty pretty pins with some beads or some of the fancy pins that are out now. It's just another design element. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our batting with the nice side down and the needle punch side up. This is the side that would normally be on the back of your quilt and not, not towards the top of your quilt. We're gonna put a little bit of glue in our plastic lid with a little bit of water. I like a 75-25 mix. I want it to be a little runny, but I don't want it to be totally runny. So it's more like maybe a Mod Podge that you're using. So go ahead, experiment with that. You just want it to be runny. Oh, I don't know, like the consistency of maybe gravy. Um, and if you don't want to mess with the water, don't mess with the water. Just go ahead and use the glue full strength. I don't use it full strength because I don't want the lumpiness that comes when you glue something. Um, and I find if I add a little bit of water to it, it's not a problem. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the back of our foam core board and I should back up and tell you that if you don't want to use a full piece of foam core board, by all means, cut it down to the size that you want. They put wonderful grids on the foam core board that you can use to cut it to size, to the size that you need um, for the area where you want your display board. You do have to work quickly here. It does set up pretty good, and we may end up just putting our batting on half and then gluing the other half while the half that we just did is drying together. And because it's thin and we've added um, water to it, it will tend to dry much, much quicker. Now, why do I glue the whole foam core board? Because I don't want the batting to fall away from my foam core board. And over time, when you use these things, it's like doing a wall hanging with not enough stitching in it. The batting tends to fall away and it droops and drags and then it's not pretty anymore. And, and as far as what we're doing with display boards, it's not useful anymore either because you can't get anything to stay where you need it to stay. Ooh, I timed that just perfect. I got just the right amount this time. That doesn't always happen in my world. I usually have access, so then I gotta go grab another board. Cause, oh man, I hate to waste this stuff. You know, we're back to, I paid money for this, I wanna use the whole thing. You know my story. I don't like to throw things away. Okay, so once the foam core board is completely coated, 
you're going to center it on your piece of batting as best you can. Eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're going to go ahead and push it down. And you're going to smooth it out. And you're going to press it out. And then flip it over. And you're going to smooth out the sides. And kind of flip that over. Oh, this is looking good. Good, good, good. All right. There, now you can see we got a really good seal to it, so it isn't going to go anywhere. Now we're just going to let that dry for just a bit. And while that's drying, what we're going to do is we're going to come back with our scissors and we're going to cut the first layer to the edge of the foam core board. And that way the edges don't get so thick, so it's easier to hang. So grab your scissors. And you're going to come right along next to the edge of the foam core board and cut it all nice and pretty. Or if not pretty, do the best you can and don't worry about it. Because remember, it's, it's if you're doing it my way, you're going to cover it with fabric anyway, so it really isn't going to matter. And if you saw in an earlier video, when I, when I tell you what to do with these batting scraps that are small, go ahead if they're big enough and cut them to two and a half inches. Store them in that box that you've got underneath your quilt frame or in your closet all ready for your next project. And then not only will you have a beautiful display board, but you can turn around and make a cozy rug to go on your floor as well or a bowl or a basket to sit on your table to hold some of your crafting items. So now you got a couple uses for this stuff. Put that over there. I'm getting there. We're just about there. I will tell you that there is one side that is much easier to cut when you put your scissors next to the foam core board and it goes just a little bit quicker. Then if you try and cut the other side, I find that to be annoying. And because this is glued, it's not going to go anywhere on us. So it'll work just fine. And, ta-da! Whoops, that's a nasty corner. We'll clean that up. Ta-da! We're all covered. So, as you can see, foam core board, batting, all even for the first layer. Then for our second layer, again, we're going to put the nice side down and the needled side up. And you'll know what I mean when you look at your batting. There's a right and a wrong side to your batting. I don't know if you've ever paid attention to it. If you send your quilts out and have them finished, you probably don't even know because you don't pay any attention to it. But there is a right side and a wrong side to your batting. So basically what you're going to do is put your wrong side up, if you will. All right, then I got to put the scissors out of there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of glue on here. I might have to make up a little bit more, but along the edge, it doesn't have to go the whole length. It's just along the edge where we're gonna bring that batting over. And I suggest you do this one side at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that up and pull it over. You don't wanna go any more than two or three inches. That might be a little big, but we're there cause I glued it. So you're gonna come up, like I said, Try and keep it around two or three inches. Yep, I think that'll work fine. And then we're going to come back over here. And we're going to repeat the process and do the same thing. We're going to put this over here. Oh, this is going to be nice when it's done, you guys. I'm going to love this. Ah, I'm so excited. We're getting so organized now. I just love it. 
just just love it okay so now we have that over here we're gonna make sure that it's taut we don't want it so tight that it rips but we want to keep it nice and taut and that way we don't have any of the droopage now it's up to you what you want to do with your corners you can fold them over glue them down and be done with it you can fold them like a present and bring them up and glue it down you are gonna have and i'm not altogether sure you can see that you are gonna have a lot of bulk in this corner so what i suggest is that you just cut this corner out so you're gonna come in straight and you're gonna to cut to the inside, not all the way, leave it about a quarter of an inch. And that way that can fold over your foam core board. This can fold in, this can come up. I think I left too much on there. There we go. All right, see what a nice corner that gives us. Not quite sure you can see that, but we get a nice, nice flat corner. That's kind of what you're going for. So if you cut that bulk out of the four corners, it'll lay nice. It'll look nice. Remember, leave about a quarter of an inch away from the foam core board so that you have something that you can fold over. I don't know. Can you, can you guys see that okay? Just you want to be able to fold that down so that it's covered when you pull that side up. So go ahead and cut your four corners. Now is when you can take a look and you can see that I have way too much batting over here. I'm going to want to cut that down. Now is the time to get that done. Again, yeah. You really don't want much more than about two or three inches because it's going to get really bulky on the back and it'll bubble out and it won't look good. You won't, you won't be pleased with your result. I need to mix up a little more glue. I was a little short. So there we go. Oh, fantastic. When you only do little bits at a time, it's not bad. This is the only place that you're gonna use. And yes, I do glue over the batting because I do want it to hold. And that's a really weird feeling. I don't know about you guys, I just, mm, that to me is like chalk, fingernails on a chalkboard when you're cutting taking fabric over, um, wet stuff over fabric. Oh, I don't know, I just can't stand that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave mine this way and I'm gonna bring it up. There we go. I'm just gonna fold it under just a little bit because I really want that to be flat, but I really want that corner tucked in. There. All right, I feel like Bob Ross. It's just a happy little baddie. Anyway, like I said, get out of the excess. You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't want it. <laughs> get rid of it. Can you see there what we've done? Okay. Now, technically, you should let this dry before you move on to the next step. But in the instance of what we're doing, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it. And yeah, so I'll just go ahead and finish that. So again, if you missed it the first time, you go ahead and paint your batting. Oh, I really don't like that. Ah, uh, that is just something else. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. And then paint up your foam core 
Lord. Here. Oh, that worked out so well. Perfect. Okay, and I'm going to fold my side in. And I'm going to bring it up and stick it down. Bring my side up. Bring my other side up. Again, we're going to fold this side in. Bring it up. And there we go. All right, so first step done. Now you can see we have a completely wrapped piece with batting. And if that's good enough for you, and that's the way you like it, and that's the way you want it, leave it at that and be done. Not a problem. It'll work fantastic for you. The batting will hug and snug all of the uh, all of the pieces that you put on it, the pieces of fabric. But if you want to go the next step, then the next thing to do is grab your piece of fabric. I use flannel, and I highly suggest you do too, because flannel seems to grab fabric way better than cotton. And again, you're going to put it wrong side up on your table, and you're going to put your, center your piece of fabric. Now this one you want to be a little bit longer because you actually want it to cover your batting, okay? But this time, instead of gluing, we're gonna tape that down with our duct tape because we want this to be nice and tight. And we want a really good seal and we want it to stick nice. Now, when we're just putting the sides up, we don't need a whole lot of it. And you'd be surprised how well tape and fabric glue together. Okay, then we come to the other side. And I wanna make sure that I push down the board against the all right, so now we have this side on, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring this up. Now you want to make sure that it's nice and taut. And put your tape on there, and then we move on to the corners. Again, if the fabric you're using is giving you too much bulk, don't be afraid to cut the corners out. Otherwise, it's just like a present. You fold your corners in, you bring your end up, you want to make it nice and snug and taut. And go ahead and tape that side down. Then we're going to flip it around to the other side. Again, we're going to fold in the corners, make it look like a present. We're going to snug it up. We're going to bring it up, bring it down, and tape it down. Now, the reason we don't put a whole bunch of tape all the way around on this is because when we flip it over, if it's too loose or too wrinkly, then we can go ahead and make our adjustments. And as you can see, it's just absolutely perfect. Then from here, it's just a matter of taking your tape and making sure that everything is nice and secure. Don't be afraid to tape over what you've already taped over. You wanna make sure that this fabric doesn't move on my earlier example, I went all the way to the edges. I don't know that I think that's necessary. I will leave that up to you. But once you have the back completely covered with tape, your board is finished and ready to hang on the wall. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you'll make a design wall for yourself. Don't be afraid to leave any comments or questions down below, even if it doesn't pertain to today's project. Hopefully we can get to those and maybe make a video on whatever you're looking to learn how to make. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep our channel growing. And thank you so much to everybody who's already subscribed. We are so glad you're here. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Bye for now. Wait just a minute before you go. You have to see my design wall. 
Didn't that turn out awesome? <gasps> Yay, I'm so excited. Thanks for joining me today. Now you really can go. Have a great day. Bye for now.